Hi, I'm Eric, and this is Adventures in Golf. And for this episode, we've traveled to Malibu, California, 21 miles of some of the most scenic and expensive coastline in the world, and not a golf course in sight, officially anyway. So we're cruising around Malibu. I feel like Elliot Gould in The Long Goodbye. Malibu is kind of a touristy location. There's only a handful of people that actually live here. Obviously really beautiful, but nonetheless, not any golf here right now. But I have heard of this kind of uber, unofficial, private, exclusive, unknown, secret, X marks the spot, nine hole routing. The Malibu Nine, to coin a term, consists of three separate locations within a five mile span just off the Pacific Coast Highway. And we're gonna go stitch them all together and see how we do. All right, so here we are. We have pierced the veil of Pepperdine, the Christian school in Malibu College. And there's a golf hole here. I've been told, I've seen it rumored. I've even dissected the Google Maps imagery. We parked on the PCH and now we're traveling by foot into the jungle that is high-end American college with a golf hole. Obviously the school is closed due to COVID. So we got the place to ourselves. Just to underscore and really clarify the emotion of the moment right now, we are trespassing. So whatever music is playing in the edit, it should be really intense. Like, Maybe Beverly Hills Cop, you know? So, we're gonna try to become the first course record holder of the unofficial Malibu 9. I don't know if anyone's actually done it, or if we even will accomplish this task. All right, there's a gardener watering. Question is, if this was a choose your own adventure, would you say, talk to the greenskeeper, or avoid the greenskeeper? Avoid the Greenskeeper came in at 60%. All right, folks. I see familiar sights. I see a bunker, and I see some little tiny flags. So this seems to be a tee box here, quite literally, with the edges carved out. We got the green over there, and I mean, you're not gonna get much of a more clear invitation to tee it up than this. All right, public safety just rolled by. They didn't even look at me. Now he's turning around though. In the interest of, you know, us potentially getting kicked out, I'm just gonna try to get my par and move on. Are you guys open for tea times? That's negative. Unless you guys are uh, affiliated with the university. Um, just some friends told us about the golf course and they were like, yeah, you should come by and check it out. Nobody's here right now. If you guys aren't affiliated, you guys just gotta head out in the next couple minutes. Okay. okay. So. Hey, I really appreciate it, officer. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, I see it. All right, folks. We went a little long on the first shot. Maybe I got a bad bounce. Maybe I just hit it poorly. Truly anything's possible. Now comes the difficult choice where you need to pick which of these six holes you're gonna go for. Um, I'm gonna hit mine and then I'm gonna pick. That is a local rule. You're totally allowed to do that. Wow, that rolls out. most painful and exciting double bogeys I've ever made in my life. As they say, the course gets a little harder. The challenges get a little more real. The first hole is kind of an easy handshake. Uh, honestly, double bogey without any trespassing fines. I'm super psyched about it. On to the next hole. Fines are the least of my worries for the next location. Thankfully, I'm meeting up with my friend Landon, who agreed to be my partner in crime. Welcome to Malibu. Thank you, Landon. Yeah, we're, we're here at the uh, Malibu Lumberyard, and we're just a mere Bryson DeChambeau drive away from the hidden gem, the most private golf course, maybe in LA. Maybe Definitely. California. May, uh, maybe, maybe west of the Mississippi. Right over there, we have the Parenchio Hidden Three Holes. 
In 1982, Jerry Perenchio, the media mogul billionaire, received a permit to build a rock wall, a jogging track, and a few ponds on his property. But instead, he illegally built a three-hole golf course. About 35 miles from here is Bel Air Country Club. The Perenchios were members there. Uh, his wife was a just nutso golfer, like we all are. <laughs> and, uh, and he couldn't keep her at the house enough, so he decided with a little plot of land he had right off of PCH, uh, to build a little golf setup where she could practice and she wouldn't have to go all the way to Bel Air. After years of litigation, it was agreed upon that the property would be left to the state when he and his wife passed away. He kept it a secret, not only from the city, but also from his neighbors as well. Um, and the crazy thing is it's just all in plain sight. I mean, it's, it's literally 20 feet off of PCH. So the interesting thing about Malibu is there's a lot of houses that have golf courses on them. If you zoom out and look, there's a house here that has three holes and it's a quarter mile away. And if you zoom up, there are there's a green there. Like this is not an uncommon story for houses in Malibu to have a golf green or a chipping area. What we're talking about here is a fully maintained three hole golf complex that's not on someone's house. And that's kind of what separates that along with the Pepperdine story and the Greg Alterman story. So these are the three, I think, most unique versions of the Malibu nine hole golf course. This is our next obstacle, and I don't mean water hazard. And I gotta tell you, it's one thing to just walk onto a college property. It's another thing to just jump a fence that has a big no trespassing sign placed every 50 feet. This is fully happening. It's, it's like heaven in here. This is the pearly gates. That's the golf course. You've got to see this. Literally right inside here, you can see the entire golf course. It's perfect. All right, folks. We're at a crossroads, if you will. This is sort of, um, the last moment that you have before you kind of eat the forbidden fruit. Jose. Hola. Yeah. Jose. Uh, buenos dias. Yeah. Um, that was strange because when I put my hand through the hole, there was a hand there. <laughs> and I think maybe he's been there for a while. We're trying to play all the hidden holes in Malibu. I, totally, totally. All right, so uh, shut down from the Perenchio portion of the course. Looks like it's kind of um, unavailable to us today. Uh, the man inside would, would, not, would not let us in and no amount of name dropping was gonna change that for him. And respect, it shouldn't, but it looks like what is perhaps one of the more private sections of holes of the Malibu 9, if not the world, is, uh, is unavailable at this moment. All right, well, if we can't get in the course, we can at least get over the course. Flying the drone has always been a really great way to see the course. I mean, what a stunning piece of property. It's really too bad there's not a golf course out here because there's so much beautiful natural landscape with the ocean and the mountains meeting together. It's it's really striking. There used to be a golf course called Malibu, but um, they're closed now. There's no golf there. They're 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 not open. So we're gonna go look at that. All right. Wow. It has been a while since I've been to Malibu Golf Club and it does not look like the most welcoming place. From the remnants of the fire from two years ago, the palm trees that kind of lined the entrance here are burned. And then the signs obviously on this wrought iron fence saying in about 27 different ways and languages don't come in here. And I won't bore you with the basic ones. The most interesting one really is, is right here. Um, it says, can you make it to the fence in three seconds? We can. This actually inspires fear. 
deep. It kind of makes me think about like what courses we support and how we support them and you know, it's sad that a golf course has to close. Well, story of the day folks. Some of the most private golf in the world, but luckily my friend Greg is gonna save the day for our Malibu. Looks like it's gonna be about a six hole course. All right, so we're here at Greg's house. Doors open, open sesame. Greg, what's up, man? Hey, hey. What's I, going on, buddy? I brought my lucky wedge, and I'm here to see it. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's do this. This is my uh, this is my first taste of the Alterman Lynx. I've I've been to your house before, but the Alterman Lynx is a new uh, construction. Is it called Alterman Lynx? Actually, Alterman Canyon Club. Oh, I like that. And there's only one rule that you need to be aware of, and that is there are no divots at ACC. If you take a divot, it's grounds for never being invited back. Wow. I hope you brought a lot of balls. I brought one sleeve. Is that enough? <laughs> that is not enough. Not <laughs> that is not enough. One look at the five hole course and I understand why. Alterman Canyon Club is a really great name for a, for a, for a golf course. If you look here, we've, we've got about 100 feet of vineyard. Okay. Uh, that sort of used to go down the entire hill. I took that out basically because we had awful wine. Instead of turning water into wine, you turned wine into golf. I love it. Look at this <laughs> amazing spot. So what, what hole is this? So we're standing on the first green and the fourth green. We've got an eight inch cup there. Oh, wow. It's a little easier, but it gets, makes for some uh, exciting gambling. Yeah. All right, and so this is the walk so, back to the first tee? Uh, yeah, this is a walk to the first tee box. Let's tee off, dude. All right, let's do this. This yeah. is an exclusive club. It's, I don't know if you knew that. I mean, do, what do I have to do to Are you, join? Well, in order to be a member, you've got to actually have a hole in one. I am And a they have that. happened out here. It's oh, not a member of this club. Do you want to go first, or how do you normally do I, this? I think uh, I usually give honors to my guests. So, And by the way, um, nobody's ever had an ace right out of the gate here on their first shot, so good luck. All right, folks, Ace Cam's live. Ultraman Canyon Club. I'm looking for a membership. Anything is possible. Oh, wow. Right out of the gate, that looks good. That oh, looked very good and very close. It's so addictive, got, it, dude. It really is. You can't you can let sit go. out here for hours. Nah. That's long. That's Jeez. in the neighbor's yard. I might get a letter <laughs> from the city. You think so? <laughs> uh oh. Go in oh the hole. god. Oh god. <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> this is the stuff nightmares are made up of. Really, is that why you had me it, go first? It really is. I've been humbled out here for two years. I've become a worse golfer because of this place. <laughs> that actually might be good. That might be good. Go in. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was very close. You don't um, come to Alterman Canyon Club to post a score. You come here to get a hole in one. That's true. How, what's the most amount of balls you've ever hit out here at once? 200. But you do get dialed eventually. That actually is good. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> You're a member! Did you, <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna happen. <laughs> Finally! I did spend one episode on an earlier season spending days trying to get an elusive hole in one. And I'm proud to say that this is my second hole in one. And uh, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you just never know if today's gonna be your day. The second hole is a par four, which is terrifying. That's so good. All right. This is 28 yards, and it is the hardest flop of your life. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of trouble up there. I started the day in search of a course that was only rumored to exist. Did you see that? 
Was that a divot that he just took? I did. <laughs> and it ended with a membership in two exclusive clubs, the Alterman Canyon Club and the elusive oh, Malibu Nine. Okay. Oh. okay. No divot. I don't want anything to put my own membership in jeopardy. With three holes left to make it official, you can bet that I'll be waiting for the day more become available to complete my inaugural round. Until then, my scorecard and I will be waiting.